Good morning, everyone. Bonjour. Bon matin. Annie. Uh, before I begin, I want to acknowledge that we are gathered today on the traditional lands of the Tikmishing Anishinaabe peoples, as well as the uh, Sagamok and Wanapate First Nation, and uh, glad to be here this morning to start this day in a good way. So on behalf of City Council, I'm pleased to welcome all attendees to the 2023 Mining Health and Safety Conference hosted by Workplace Safety North. It is great to be back together in person after a few years of virtual gatherings. So I also want to acknowledge that uh, my colleague, Councillor Mike Parin, is here, but in another capacity, and he'll be coming to speak to you in a few moments. And uh, just, uh, Mike is a big champion of this group, and I really want to uh, well, uh, certainly acknowledge his hard work at City Council. So as Mayor of Greater Sudbury, I'm committed to supporting a greener and healthier future for the mining industry. It's encouraging to see representatives from mining companies, research institutions, occupational health and safety organizations, and others all coming together with a shared goal of ensuring that every worker returns home at the end of their shift, safe and healthy. This year's theme, Evolution of Mining, Safety, Past Reflections and Future Innovations, provides a timely occasion to consider lessons learned and to review best practices. While much progress has been made to improve safety measures in the industry, continuous efforts are necessary to further ensure the well-being of mining and mining workers. Greater Sudbury's long and rich mining history provides a unique case study in illustrating the challenges and opportunities inherent in a modern, cleaner, and safer mining industry. As the world's largest integrated mining industrial complex, Greater Sudbury currently has nine operating mines, two mills, two smelters, a nickel refinery, and over 300 mining supply and services company, all within our municipal boundaries, and it's growing. As you will all know, since the late 20th century, improved ventilation controls, technological advances in automation, the introduction of underground communications and remote control machinery have all reduced the risk of accidents and improved working conditions for miners. Regulatory improvements and labor union advocacy have also contributed greatly to safer workplaces. In many cases, Greater Sudbury has been at the forefront of these changes led by many stakeholders right in this room. Increasingly, we, know, we now have an opportunity to focus on mental health and wellness in the mining industry. Recognizing the unique challenges and stressors associated with mining work companies are implementing programs and resources to support the mental well-being of workers, including access to mental health services, stress management, and resilience training. I applaud these efforts at improving physical and mental health and safety in mining in all industries across Greater Sudbury, across our province, and across our country. À l'égard de l'industrie minière au Grand Sudbury, je crois fermement qu'il faut regarder devant et planifier l'avenir. Nous devons rester ouverts aux nouvelles idées, aux nouvelles preuves et nouvelles façons de faire les choses. Ce faisant, nous pouvons tirer parti de nos forces existantes, surmonter les obstacles potentiels et adopter l'originalité pour forger notre propre voie vers un futur en toute sécurité pour l'industrie minière. So thank you to the hosts of this conference, Workplace Safety North, and to all organizers who made this event possible. Workplace Safety North builds important relationships across Northern Ontario as a trusted safety advisor and carries on the important tradition of making workplaces safer since 1915. I hope you all enjoy the opportunity to connect and learn throughout this conference. Merci beaucoup, Big Witch. Thank you. All right, this is how it's done, everyone. I want you all to just... I'm going to get happy. When you do a good selfie, okay, it's about getting high enough that you can get everybody in and get yourself in, see, all right? Use the long way. There we go. Everybody smile. Okay, I'm doing it this way, too. Smile. I'll try you're not smiling. Okay, there we go. Okay, see how that, that hashtag workplace safety, work, work safety 2023. Okay, and without further ado, I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, Mike Perron, parent, he said I could say it any way I want, Vice President Prevention Services at Workplace Safety North uh, for a state of the industry. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. No, I need to feel a little bit more. Four years, four years since we've been doing this, so I'm going to look for a little bit more today. When you're preparing for a conference and standing in front of a group of 300 people and 100 on live stream, your nerves are high, and you think, I'm going to go in there, get the energy from them to carry me for the next half hour. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, only those on the live stream. Good morning. (laughs) That didn't work out as well as I thought it would. Here we are back, back in this room, And for some of us, the first time that we're in a group again, 
and we get those awkward feelings. I need you to know that's pretty normal. A lot of us are feeling that for the first time, but as the day goes on, as we network, as we look at trade shows, it'll go away, and we're gonna be back to that awesome experience of coming to a Workplace Safety North Mining Health and Safety Conference. Now, I need a clicker to keep my presentation going so I could share with you a little bit about the state of our industry. That's definitely not it. There's probably a big one that says Q is probably the one they want me to use. So I'll start with a story, which I always like to do. So a few years back, uh, I was traveling on personal, and we did an excursion off-site. And I don't know if some of you have been to these countries where the excursion is this big bus. It's lifted off the ground with these big mud tires, and they serve um, a drink on them. I forget what they call it. Rum? Maybe you've heard of these? <laughs> So it's this rum bus ride we're going on, and we're just driving to a community that's showing us some really cool stuff, and all of a sudden I see this, and I yell to the bus driver, stop the bus, and you know, you hear somebody kind of stop something, and like the record scratches, and everybody stops, and they're staring at you, and I crawl down off this monster bus with my camera, and I take a picture of this, and I think they were expecting there was something grand that I was taking a photo of, right? They didn't know I was just some safety geek who saw something, that was of interest to me. So if we look at what I saw, we see a great big sign, and that says, I can't read it from here, can somebody help me with this? Oh, go ahead, you're doing great. <laughs> Entry at your own risk will not be responsible for accident, damage, or injury. Whoa. Enter at your own risk will not be responsible for accident, damage, or injury. Now just to the top of that, what's that little sign say? Anybody make it? <laughs> Close. That says worker's shelter. Why would we put a big sign like that in front of a worker's shelter? I ask you, do you believe they have an internal responsibility system at that workplace? No, no. They have, I am only me responsible for my safety at this workplace. I don't know the country, I don't know their regulations, but I do know what message this sent when I just drove by, stopped the bus full of drunken rum drinking people on this excursion so I could take a photo of this. The point of the story is, in this country, likely people work hard at being safe because they likely don't have you know, a compensation type system that if they were hurt and the consequences to them go home, meaning if they can't work, they're not bringing money in for their home. So to some degree, workers take a lot of responsibility for safety, but we know to have true health and safety in the workplace, all parties have to be involved. That's what I appreciate about Ontario. Where am I going with this? This next slide, get ready, here it comes. This is our occupational health and safety universe. Now, how many of you have seen this slide before? Don't, don't be shy, oh, there we go. We had two people, and they're both leaders in health and safety in that system. How many of you were surprised to see the amount of noise on this? This universe is very busy. I'm gonna try and give both sides some time here, but if you look in the middle, the center of this universe, it starts with the Ministry of Labor, Immigration, Training, Skills, Development. The minister has a deputy minister and a chief prevention officer. They get, they get advice from the chief prevention office council. They also get advice from the uh, my, uh, section 21 committees. So these are committees formed bipartite and they receive noise. And in mining here, it's the mining legislative review committee that's the section 21 committee. Now I gotta run to this side without tripping at a health and safety conference <laughs> and share a little bit more. And you can see the other divisions, you have policy division, where they, they form policy and the regulations based on a lot of input, and then you have the operations, the compliance, those uh, inspectors that go to sites and ensure compliance. And then you have agencies, WSIB, you have oversight, like the Office of the Employee Advisor, the Office of the Workplace Safety Insurance Appeals Tribunal, and you have key stakeholder groups, you know, employer groups, union, trade associations, a whole lot of input that also gives us the training, uh, employer recognition rule, research and funding grants. All of this is our universe. And then in the middle here, delivery of OHS support services, the health safety associations. And this is us, that third little bullet in all of this universe, Workplace Safety North. 
But to us at Workplace Safety North, we are the center of the universe and everything involves around us. We are leaders in the industry, especially mining. Our history is long and deep in leading safety initiatives. Now, in all of this, all of this noise, there needs leadership. And the Chief Prevention Office is accountable for providing that leadership to the health and safety system. They're also accountable to bring the strategy. And for that, we have the Chief Prevention Officer, Joel Moody. Joel was brought into office in September of 2021 after a long search to make sure we had the right person leading the group. I'll share a little bit about him and then I'll introduce him to come up and meet with the group. Joel Moody is Ontario's Chief Prevention Officer since September 15, 2021. He previously served as a Chief Public Safety Officer and Senior Director of Analytics at the Electrical Safety Authority with over 17 years of experience in labour organizations in Ontario. Dr. Moody has a prevention division and oversees Ontario's occupational safety prevention system. Dr. Moody is recognized for his innovative approaches to harm reduction and regulatory oversight and for building strong relationships with stakeholders. He also emphasizes equity, diversity and inclusion in his leadership philosophy. Dr. Mo Moody holds multiple degrees, including executive education certification from Harvard University, a doctor of medicine, a master of public health, and a bachelor of science in engineering. Without further ado, Dr. Joel Moody. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I, I'm at, at a podium. I don't like being at a podium, but if you can't hear me, I'll have to stay here for a bit. So I want to thank you, Mike, uh, First Mayor. Thank you very much for being here, uh, Lydia, and to the Board of Directors, uh, to Paul and, and staff at WSN, but even more so to yourselves. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm excited to be here. This is my first conference this year, my first conference in three years, and I wanted to be here with you. Well, why? Well, first and foremost, uh, my duty and responsibility, as you see on that last slide, um, I don't sleep a lot. Um, but even more so, I want to come and meet you. I want to come and talk with you. But I want to listen. Because ultimately, how we are going to continue to move health and safety forward at the end of the day is not for me. Um, I'm a public servant. I serve you. At the end of the day, you all are providing the services. You all are working with your communities. You all are working with your employer. But even more so, you're working for your fellow worker. So what you experience, what you see, innovation comes from yourselves. Imagine you're on your job. You see something that's not quite working the way you want it to do. Well, let's see if we can change it. I want to listen, I want to hear, because at the end of the day, this is how we're going to make things move forward. So moving forward, the concept of how do we work together as that system, so important. Workplace Safety North, thank you. Your long history uh, of being leaders in the system is noticed, not only here in Ontario, throughout the world, throughout Canada. Um, just a quick history, when I first joined, um, there was something that was called an, an incident that was happening in a mine. So that was kind of my day three on the job. Mine rescue. Imagine if we didn't have that resource available. I say no more. It's through the works, it's through those abilities, it's through those ideas that we are continuing to be the leaders of not only how we work in confined spaces, how we work with ventilation, how we work with dust, all of those things are aspects that are helping to drive the system toward excellence. So we work together with our colleagues, not only with our ministry, Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, our other colleagues outside of ministries, but at the end of the day, I still come back. How do we find ways that we are continuing to provide that internal responsibility system between both worker and employee and the, the, the business, the power to actually empower yourselves to help make change. Um, Mike, you read a lot. Um, I'll have to talk to my staff about shortening that a little bit because I saw some people nodding off a bit. But for me, 
just want to, to put it in a little perspective. Um, I am a physician by training. Um, have had chances where we've been successful with incidents and have been unfortunately in situations where we were not successful. So I've seen it. I do not want individuals to not come home at the end of the day, both well and whole. We keep forgetting about that whole piece also. So for me, this is personal. And for me, this is why I enjoy what I do because I care. I serve you. Moving forward, opportunities that we have in order to move forward, and we'll maybe talk about a little strategy about some of those ideas that we're doing. But at the end of the day, how do we find ways to support you? My door is always open, uh, joel.moody at ontario.ca, uh, joel.moody at ontario.ca. So if you want to send an email, please do. Uh, I do respond. It may take a couple of days. But I'll, I'll get back to you. So want to listen, come by. I'm here for the entire conference. We talk about making uh, you know, time for important things. This is one of those important things for me. So I'm here. Please come by, introduce. I want to get to know you. I want to say hello. And no question is, is off limits for me. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm here to learn. So thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. And now I turn it back to you because no one wants to hear me anymore. <laughs> Excited. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Moody. And again, on that tone of listening, uh, as a sector, as that OHS universe, that's what we do. We listen to so many groups as to influence what we do. And the TPO's office is, again, accountable for the provincial strategy. Now, the strategy you see on the screen is one that we've been, um, we're kind of in the middle of this strategic plan and into operationalizing it as a system. And if you look at, you know, the, the key objectives here, build and use the best evidence to target initiatives and measure performance. You know, for a long time, how safe we do things, we feel good about them. But now we're at a point where we've evolved. We need to know how much of an impact they have. What is the parts of it that have the greatest impact? How do we do more of those and learn from them? Improve OHS knowledge and practices. We see a lot of newcomers coming to Canada. We're having them. We need them to fill in a lot of the positions we have. What's that going to mean as far as language, culture barriers? So you know, this is becoming more. And that's why we have the immigration now embedded in the ministry on things like improving OHS knowledge and practices. Support workplace fulfill their OHS roles and responsibilities. And again, that's at the heart of the internal responsibility system, which is again uh, an idea that came from Ontario due to mining. The Ham Commission uh, from the Wildcast right led to the internal responsibility system. So again, fulfill those workplace parties. And we have things like the WSIB HSCP program to help support these. And then make OHS easier for small businesses. We know that smaller businesses don't necessarily have all of the resources and all the programs that a larger business does. So again, it's working together as a system to help make sure they have the supports they need and the programs they need to operate health and safety workplaces. We have two areas of focus, occupational illness and workplace mental health and workplace violence and harassment. Now that latter one, that, that was becoming an emerging issue, you know, 2018, 2019, and in 2020, it was just like pooling fuel to the fire, and we're living today with the consequences of that. So you're going to see a lot of efforts by not only our organization, but the other system partners in supporting employers with that, because it is a complicated issue. And um, you know, you're really trying to get into the stigma and into the culture of each organization to support them. So this is given to us. We are told, here's the provincial strategy, WSN, you need to take this, and then what we do is we use it to build our own strategy. I'm a big fan of how we do it at WSN. We, we actually have you know, our board come up, kind of big key themes. We bring it all the way down to the frontline team members so they can kind of give guidance, have their fingerprint on it. We take inputs from the advisory committees, from the sectors we serve, and then we bring it back up to the board. And once again, we look to their leadership on how, what they want us to do with that. And on that leadership, um, we're, we're privileged today to have the chair of the board, Lydia Renton, who's going to come up in a moment and just speak about that. Lydia is an accomplished occupational hygiene and safety professional, currently serving as chair of the WSN board, 
and Director of Occupational Hygiene, Safety and Security at Blue Metric Environmental. She has been recognized with awards such as the Hugh Nelson Award of Excellence and is a certified auditor for the International Cyanide Management Code. Lydia is also actively involved in volunteer activities, holding leadership positions in a number of organizations with extensive experience in developing and delivering health and safety environment programs globally. Lydia has provided guidance and consultation to senior management, health and safety committees, unions, and employees. Her expertise and contributions make her a respected figure in the field of occupational hygiene and safety. Lydia, please come and join the group. Let's make some noise for our friend, Lydia. Thank you, everyone. And um, first of all, I'd like a bit more noise for Mike. I think he's uh, getting us all rallied. So a little bit of a round of applause for Mike and everything he does. Uh, again, I don't like standing in a podium. I like walking around a bit. And I, but I only really have three minutes, so I'll use those wisely. Um, firstly, I'm really honored to be the, the chair of the board for WSN which is an excellent and a great place to work, as you all know, and they have been recognized for that. Uh, through the leadership of Paul Andre and, and his staff, and all of the staff, you know, WSN provides health and safety services in mining sector, uh, as well as forestry and pulp and paper and a number of other industries here in Northern Ontario and throughout Ontario. Um, but the board is, is uh, and I believe we have a few members of the board of directors, so I'd like them to stand up. I can't see you because of the lights, but I know for sure that Louise Keiko Tate is here from the Sioux. Uh, Louise, are you somewhere around? I don't see you standing. I know she's here. She may be setting up her booth. Um, and then um, a few members who, um, I know Derek Budge from Red Path is here today. Thank you, Derek. <clears throat> and I believe, I'm not sure if Jason, Jason Bupa from NORCAD is here, but I'll, I'll just name the other board members. Uh, they are from right across Ontario, so we have Andrew Templeman, um, who's from Resolute Forestry in Thunder Bay. Uh, we have Marilyn Finley from Domtar in, um, in Dryden. We have Dave Kelly, who's also uh, with Mine Rescue. Um, and we have Tim Bremner from Farasco, Eric uh, Hapakani, ha sorry, Hapamaki, sorry, and he's in, in uh, Sudbury, as well as um, Michelle Gilbert from Valet, who I believe is going to be here today. Michelle, are you here now? Maybe she's going to show up later. Okay. But, you know, the, um, as Mike has pointed out, um, WSN has the oversight from a board of directors, and you say, well, why do they need that? Don't they get what they need from the, the ministry? Well, our role is really for the oversight to, um, to see that the strategic plan is, is held to what they say they're going to be, to provide some key, um, key initiatives, for some forward thinking. And then also there is a fiscal responsibility around that also, as well as to the ministry. Um, and so, you know, I encourage you for, to, uh, to reach out also to board members as well as staff here to talk about the services that WSN can provide to you. And I'm going to leave you with just a little short story um, to make you think um, as you're progressing into today's conference. And that is, uh, very early in my career, uh, the very first work experience I had in the mine was back in 1981 when I went up to Man Nana Civic Mine top of Baffin Island, so it is remote, and it is like way north of Canada. And it was a, a lead and zinc mine at the time, and I was with Health Canada, um, junior uh, industrial hygienist, and we were gonna be doing some, mi um, some monitor, air monitoring for lead and zinc um, as the, uh, the ship was being loaded uh, with, uh, with ore. And um, what happened, the night that we came in, there was a, a collapse and a fatality. And at the same time, or the same night anyway, the, uh, the ship that came in took Strathcona Sound pretty sharply and took out part of the dock and also punched a big hole in the side of the hull. So we had to wait over five, six, seven days before we could do anything. And it, it, it caused me to reflect a little bit, also really live in the mining community, and uh, I ended up 
having the t-shirt and doing the, uh, the Terry Fox walk run up there, and I really do, I have the t-shirt that says Terry Fox first run Nana Civic. But where I'm going with this is that, you know, there's a lot of, of um, talk on health and safety, and a lot is on the safety side of things. So how about those big yellow trucks? Um, you know, how about all this safety matters that we need to attend to, and rightfully so. But we need to be speaking more about the health side of things, and I think you'll find today and tomorrow there's a lot of a shift more towards uh, occupational health, total worker health, in the realm of mental health and well-being. Um, we'll be talking about there's a panel on occupational diseases, which is really important. So those are the things, injuries we see, we feel, but the occupational diseases like silicosis and uh, lung cancers and, and other types of diseases that we don't talk about enough so that we can look from a prevention point of view, what are those things besides ventilation and PPE that we can do to protect ourselves and each other. So I welcome you to the conference today. I encourage you to network, to speak to each other, uh, and have some great learning uh, and experiences over the next two days. So thank you very much. Okay, so now we've talked about kind of the system and how it's working into our world. Then we get the cool stuff, things we get to do kind of on our own after we've been influenced by the system and our board. And it's that collaboration piece. And again, working with the mining industry, we accomplished so much. This is an infographic. It's in each of your bags. It's uh, something we did back in 2017, just to kind of show the journey of health, safety, and mining. But this one really ties to our theme of evolution in mining safety, past reflections, and future innovations. And you can see we go back 130 years, more than 130 years in 1890 with some initiatives. And then the font on this is so small, I can't read it at all. <laughs> But I do know some of the milestones. I know in 2014, we did the first sector risk assessment in mining. That's huge, and I'll stand, extend on that in a minute. 2015, there was the mining review. And then, you know, when we look at today, <laughs> mining in Ontario is a multi-billion dollar industry known around the world for the safety, environmental leadership, diversity, production, and innovation. But the cool part for me is not today, it's tomorrow. And when we look at tomorrow, creating the next generation of integrated predictive safety systems to improve health and safety outcomes. That's the piece we all kind of strive for, that leading indicator. We do something and we expect a certain impact, a certain outcome to that. And we're working on that right now and it's very exciting. When we talk about innovation, we see on the slide, you know, I'm like a guy who's still like a kid, right? I see electric vehicles and big trucks and drones. It excites me. These are all innovations that are gonna to continue to make our operations safer. But beyond this, there are also other innovations in how processes, how we, we approach things like top risk. For that, again, we go to the mining sector risk assessment. In 2014, the mining sector risk assessment was led by the efforts of the Mining Legislative Review Committee with a Dr. Sujoy Day. Uh, that information gave us a top risk, which I'll show in just a moment. Uh, one of the top risks, or the top risk then, was ground control, falls of ground. That information, again, we're just trying to figure out what to do with this, uh, made its way to our Technical Advisory Committee on Ground Control. Uh, this group has strong representation, probably the strongest of all of our technical advisory groups, that most mining operators have some level of involvement in that. And I just want to give a moment, kudos to you see Tom Welton, and Tom has taken these sector risk assessments and just kept going with them. We now have sector risk assessments, forestry, logging, civil culture, and root cause analysis. And we've built the process, showed others how to do this. There are other parts of the world coming to us now for this. So when we go back to the ground control. We have a top risk. We have a group now that takes the information around 2017, 2018, and they start to work with that information. Because the information is saying, these are the root cause issues that lead to really bad things happening with ground falls, and usually they're associated with really bad consequences. And when we take that information, we work on it, we expect less bad things to happen if we're actually focusing on controls. Now, this slide's probably not to the quality of all the other slides because I did it myself, and I'm not very good at these things. The team usually helps take care of these for me, but I was so excited last night because we redid the mining risk assessment sector in late 2022, but it was only approved yesterday morning.
by the group who has been working on this. So what you see on the one side, which would be your right side, the 2014, and we see ground control right there at the top, like I said. The really cool part here is you look at the other side, the 2023 risk assessment. Where do we see ground control? Is it number one? Is it number two? It's number five. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but it's a great big deal. Those who populated this in 2014 saw this strongly as a top risk. A few years later, <clears throat> with some efforts by a group kind of doing things subversively, we shifted perception of the workforce and of the employers because we made it safer. The controls are better because of the work of the Technical Advisory Committee group. That is huge. And what we also noted, I didn't bring the lagging indicator slide, but there's a lagging indicator slide. There are far less bad things happening as a result of ground falling. That is ultimate. That means more women and men go home that may not have gone home had we not had these interventions with the effects of these controls. We want to be able to do this again and again and again. But what we learned from the Technical Advisory Committee is it was a group focused on doing this together. If it had just been one employer, we probably wouldn't have shifted a whole lot. It was really a sector effort. And to do that, we've met with our advisory committees, we've had some discussions, and we have a bit of a plan, but it takes you to help us on that plan. We need to do this as a sector. If we went back, you look at the top risk, and again, this is fresh off the press only hours ago. Can we read what those, the top risk is today? Do I have somebody with a good voice that could help me here? Interactions with mobile equipment. Interactions with mobile equipment. And what's number two? Interaction with mobile equipment and pedestrians. Right. <clears throat> equipment and equipment and equipment and people. Would those of you in this room who work underground agree with that today? Yes. Yeah. yeah, same, same. So this is a, these are the top risks, and so we agree and we can tell if you, if you follow some of the bad things that happened over the last five years, it's showing itself by manifesting itself to really bad things. So we want to address this. We can all run back to operations, do our own thing. Maybe it'll make a difference somewhat, a little bit, a lot, I don't know. Or we could take a different approach. We've put together kind of a strategy and we call it the Risk Management Award. Now, the whole thing is not about an award. This process is about saying, Let's every operation sign up for this. Sign up with WSN, go to the table after, and basically say, we agree, we want to top, work on that top risk, mobile equipment interaction. And the process is a few steps that we work through, but there's steps that we know through literature and evidence that if you do all of these things and you do it well, and we kind of audit you on it, that the likelihood of those really bad things won't happen because the risk mitigation is so strong. And then after you've gone through that journey, we want to give some kind of recognition. So something you could put on a wall or a desk saying, your organization has got this process really well. You're managing this top risk well. Now, if we get firms all working together on doing this over the next 12 months, what do we expect to see in 24 and 36 months with respect to the really bad things happening on that top risk? Number five. It's going to drop. Is it going to happen in six months? No. Is it going to happen in 12 months? Probably not. It's a journey where it's going to take 24, 36 months to make sure the effectiveness of controls are real and it's having an impact. And that's the intent of the Risk Management Award, is that we agree as a, as a sector, as mining, we don't accept that top risk. We're going to work together at this. And in this case, WSN, our partner in health and safety, is going to help us. And some of those who do really well are going to come to our AGM and share their successes, what made them successful, so we can learn from that and continue to enhance the program. So this first year is a pilot. We don't believe we have it perfect. We believe we've done a pretty good job. We've had a lot of feedback. We want to move forward. We had communicated timelines earlier about you know, the end of April and then June. That was just something for us to put some, some ideas out there. They don't really mean anything. It's not about saying you have to have this in by April and done by June. We really want to just get everybody on board with the journey, work together, and help every mining firm do a really great job at managing that top risk and ensuring that even more women and men go home at the end of their shift unharmed because we've taken those extra steps to better manage that top risk. 
The nice thing about this approach is the year after, we take the next top risk when we're ready. And as a sector, as an organization, we do this again. But I fully plan in 2024 to be standing here and giving out some of these recognition awards as we go down through this journey together and make Ontario mines safer. And that's, I think, the wise plan to go. So we talk about the state of the industry and innovation. This is that next step. This is the next opportunity for us to do something great that we're going to be talking about in five years. Wow, you know, looking back, that was just so simple, so easy. But now we're doing it more and more. Problem for Ontario mining is we are one of the safer sectors out of all sectors in Ontario. We're a safe place in the world, but it's high risk hazard. So when something bad happens, it's usually really bad. And that's those consequences. So this is where we're at. I have my challenge to you is to talk to your firm and your leadership and sign up for this program so we work together at stopping this from being one of our top risks. That's all I have for today. And Cindy said I still had five minutes left. I could have gone on for another five minutes had I known that. But I'd rather do this. I'd rather give you a moment to think about this here. I'll turn this over back to Michelle Setterberg. We're going to get our keynote started a couple of minutes early. And I think that if we can save you five minutes at the end of this, it gives you a longer break, more time to network and catch up from times you haven't gotten caught up over the next four years, last four years. Thank you all. I hope you enjoy the day.